Okay, we're now going to look at threats from the rear. These are classic techniques. They've, they've been around a long time. Again, they date back to, to the, uh, the beginning of the modernization of Jiu-Jitsu. It's probably started in the, the 1860s when modern firearms were introduced from, from the West, or reintroduced. They, they always had firearms dating from the Portuguese period, but they hadn't updated it. They were still using uh, match locks all through, through that period of Japanese history until they reopened up in the 1860s. So, if his back is turned to me, the old school approach probably developed from, from knives and spears and things. So the idea, once again, an interchangeability. If I'm holding a knife to him or a firearm, the basic philosophy behind that is the same. He can defend it the same way. Uh, these attacks are, are obviously even more dangerous because you're out of your zone of operation. You can't use your arms in an efficient manner. And uh, it's far more difficult because you can't see the guy. Okay, so he can be at the high line, he can be somewhere in the middle, he can be in the low. And we're gonna, we're gonna look at these. Um, these have been around, like I said, a long time. There's a lot of schools teaching variations of these. So I, I don't only wanna show you the basics of this, I wanna show you the tweaks and the things that are not known by other schools, even though it appears they're doing the same thing. But we wanna show you how to maximize these kind of motions, because man, this is a dangerous situation because not only do you have to defend against fire, you got to realign your whole body. So let's begin with the basic concepts here. Okay, just like everything else we talked about with the firearm, the closer you are, the faster you're going to be, the less time he has to react, and it makes a big difference. Now, when you put it in this context, all of those ideas are the same, all those concepts are the same, but the difference is when there's this much distance between us and that weapon isn't touching me, I don't even know where he is, I don't even know where the weapon is, so you're adding another really, really difficult level of, uh, of tactical considerations. So at the same time, when he turns around, you know, and this is all contextual, are you on the battlefield? Well, why haven't you been shot? Is he trying to take you prisoner? Or in an urban setting, this is more likely somebody, again, wants something, wants your possessions, of course, given to him. You know, we've all done the disclaimers. These are only, especially from the rear, life or death, last ditch situations. So, if he's not expecting to be mugged or robbed, you know, if I just stand here and say, give me your money, what's he gonna do? No, he's not. He's going to turn around and say, well, who's saying that? Unless you are living in a bad neighborhood where you've been mugged 80 times in the last month, why would you think somebody's mugging you? Again, this is contextual, but for modern people living in normal urban environments, I personally have never been mugged from, from behind in, in the real world. No one's ever walked up to me and, and shoved a gun in me, so I would be very surprised if that actually happened. And again, I'm fairly familiar with, with what goes on in the real world. I've walked into armed robberies and, and seen different assaults with weapons and been involved in them, but this is one situation I've never actually been in. So if I'm standing here minding my own business, someone tells me to turn around or, you know, give me your money. Give me your money. There, okay, that, you know, that's more likely to happen. Now what if someone says don't turn around? Don't turn around. Well, why, you know, would you listen to him? Yeah, okay, now you realize, holy crap, there's a gun there. So the idea that, that all this guy's gonna do this, he's gonna do this, here's my favorite one that I hear from almost every instructor you see on video, you see on YouTube, the guys go, well, I would do this. Okay, well, the only, realistically, the only time I've ever seen that happen, ever heard of it, is in a classroom setting. I've come across no report, no place, no time, I can't find any, any witnesses that actually say someone was so concerned about your defensive skills that they came and faked it like this with their finger and kept the gun here, okay? So it's likely that he's gonna have to let you know he's got the weapon and sort of jam it in you that can be to your tactical advantage. So he's got the weapon here. So again, try to put this in context. The closer it is, the better. Now most of the time, even if I don't turn my whole body, I'm gonna look, and I'm gonna go, man, there's, there's a gun there, okay? Now, that being said, we put this in a tactical context, the realism, you're gonna be in a hold-up situation, give them the money, no problem. Maybe you've read in the paper that, you know, a bunch of people have been mugged and killed lately in your neighborhood, you're like, oh man, this is the same guy, I have to do something. We've got to give our legal disclaimers here because remember these are life or death last ditch things. First thing we got to consider is where is it? High, you know, medium, or low? All right, this is important because there's a concept that's often left out of here. Let's put it in the medium here. 
Yeah, right there. Because we want to realize that I have to move the part of my body that's the target first. Okay? So this takes a little bit of practice, but I want to start thinking about moving from the point that the gun is touching. So if he puts it down here, for example, you know, my arm is fairly close and I can knock it out of the way. If it starts going up my back, especially if it's in the center of my back, it's very hard for my arm to reach. So we have to change some things. I'm going to show you that in a minute. If it comes up a little higher, the barrel is touching the center of my back, but what part of my body is it closest to? What's the answer? My shoulder. And the shoulder is a, it is a joint, so it's not just what part of your body, it's actually what joint it's closest to. So from here, I can move it with my, with my shoulder, is the part that I want to move first. Now the reason I'm telling you this is because everybody kind of understands that I need to rotate. Okay, what we call uh, orca at my school, outside rotation. All right, the point is, how do I perform this outside rotation? I want to try to maximize how much space and time that I buy. So if it's lower here, I'm going to try to get my hip moving first as I make that rotation. Okay, this is important and it takes, you know, some practice, but when the guy has the weapon in you, it's not that difficult. Now in this case, to show you on camera, we're putting the gun on this side, but obviously if it's past center, it behooves me to move that way, all right? But tactically, it's better to be on the outside of his arm than on the inside of his arm, and we'll show you why in a minute. But we refer to that as preferred and non-preferred. Sometimes you're not going to have a choice, you're going to need to practice both ways. You're going to need to practice a lot of ways. You're going to need to practice against a wall, in a chair, you know, on your back. But if, if the option is there, generally we want to, want to turn to the outside. Now, one of the main reasons for that is I have a whole line of options each step along the way, and it's even possible that I can get behind the guy, okay, which is ideal. That's why one of the main reasons why it's better to go on the outside. If I go on the inside, there's lots of good options here too, but in the end, I'm in a face-to-face -face struggle with the guy between his two arms. And mechanically, this isn't as good, and there's not as many options, although it's certainly still viable, okay? So the first concept that we're adding to this very standard, very well-known uh, outside rotation is the idea of moving the target area first. So in this case, it's in the small of my back, so I'm actually going to I'm going to try to hip myself that way to buy myself more time, okay? That's the first idea. So let's call that moving the target area first. Next, you want to make your rotation as tight as possible. One way to really help that is to make sure you're engaging your second hand. Some people understand this, some people don't when they're, when they're taught this. So one way to practice this is when he puts the gun on me, and see how that little bit of motion I'm already offline there, although my back is still in the line of fire. Unless it's a very big bore pistol, it's not likely to, to blow a chunk of my skin off just because it's in contact with me. I may get burned. A lot of that has to do with, with what kind of clothing I'm wearing. But what I want to think about now is making sure that this outside hand, the second hand, begins moving as soon as my rotation is started. Okay? Why is that important? Well, we're going to use this hand for a lot of things in a minute. But mostly, if you just watch my rotation, it takes longer to rotate if I leave this shoulder here, because this shoulder makes a wide circle like this, and it slows me down. If I begin to move my hand, I'm already rotating a lot faster. So there's an important tweak that a lot of people don't understand. Okay, so there's two important additions to this, this technique. So when the guy puts the gun on me, first of all, maybe it's up higher again, near my shoulder, so I want to make sure I'm actually physically thinking about making contact with my shoulder first. And secondly, this hand is coming around. And you can see it does a lot of things. In this case, it may help protect me against the field of fire if it's a discharge, you know, maybe relatively close to my face, that's dangerous. All right, like we talked about. So I'm going to physically move my shoulder as I begin rotation, and my second hand is going to come around right away. Okay, now in this case, it happened to end up on the slide. I wasn't necessarily trying to do that, but that's where it ended up. So I can go right into a disarm here. 
that's not necessarily what's going on. Okay, so there's the first two tweaks. No matter where it is, if it's up on my head, all right, here's an important distinction. What's more efficient? What's getting my target area out of the way? So I don't stand here and start rotating. Okay, I move the target area first and then I move. So if I feel it against my head, I've already cleared the muzzle and my rotation hasn't even begun yet. Now, there's a real science to this and we've been working on this for a long time, so I'm gonna try and give you as many details as I can, but through practice and realistic practice with airsoft pistols and, and loud noise and things, you'll, you'll begin to, to understand this. But your head is really heavy, so not only is that safer, it helps me make my rotation faster. Okay, so there's the first tweak is whether it's low, medium, or high, you need to move that area first. Secondly, is to engage the second hand as soon as you can so that um, I make a tighter rotation. One of the ways to drill this is to use just your second hand. So from here we go here. And I practice not even using this arm, although you should, but say for some reason you can't, this can also be viable. But the idea is I want this, this second hand engaging. Okay, now here. Okay, so I go here. Okay, I practice making a tighter rotation and getting that hand motion moving. Okay? Boom. 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 Try to get here. Okay? Now, the second thing, which is tied to our third thing, is to try to get as deep behind him as possible. And each step along the way, there's things you can do. But my tactical objective is to go from him being behind me to me being behind him. Now, it certainly isn't always possible, but depending how much forward pressure he's getting, it can be done. Okay? Now, that being understood, we're now going to look at our footwork more specifically, which is one of the other tweaks that's really going to add you some advantages to this stuff.